Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Mohamed Altaf. Uh, I'm the chair for the branch. Um, welcome to this session uh, where the talk is going to be on agile coaching. Um, as you, as some of you may have heard from our previous uh, series on uh, digital transformation, um, we learned that many organizations have actually accelerated their digital transformation um, and I guess Agile has probably helped in this because it is quite fairly, fairly easy and flexible. It can change easily, you know. Um, this has then helped uh, a higher need for Agile coaches uh, and Scrum Masters. Uh, the role of Agile coach as a teacher, a mentor, a facilitator and a coach has become all more important. Uh, so we got our speaker today, Rohit. Uh, who will share skills and techniques to master um, a Scrum Master and Agile coach, as he has coached, mentored, and trained over 500 professionals on Agile and Scrum. Uh, so a little bit about Rohit. Um, is Rohit is an Agile coach helping individuals, teams, and leaders to develop a growth mindset to be top achievers in their respective work areas. Uh, he started his IT career as a developer and grew to be a business analyst, project manager, scrum master, and an agile coach. He has worked on multiple large, complex agile transformations with different consulting, financial, and product-based organizations, including Capgemini, HSBC, Equifax. Um, just before I pass you on to Rohit, uh, if you do have any questions, please post uh, it and we will answer them in our Q&A session at the end of the talk. Um, so Rohit, uh, over to you and thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction, Altaf. Uh, uh, so welcome, everyone. Uh, so what am I going to cover today? Um, today, I'm going to talk about Scrum Master, Agile Coach. Are they different? You know, what are the different things that they need to do? Uh, I want to share my journey of uh, my uh, journey in this agile world, how I started as a scrum master, what did I learn on the way? And, and what am I learning now as well? Um, I'm going to share uh, a self assessment tool um, and uh, I'll, I'll share the link uh, over chat at the end of the session which you, uh, where you can find a download, downloadable template, uh, an editable template, which you can use to self assess yourself on um, where you are now in the in terms of skill set and then plan out where do you want to be. All right. Um, and, and, the, and at the end, I'm going to talk about uh, the different stances as a scrum master or a coach and, uh, and what do we really do you know, uh, as a coach, as a scrum master. Um, something which uh, would be really helpful for you to take away. And uh, the idea uh, I, I want to share with you is, you know, we talk about transformation and we talk about changes to, uh, we need to change others, we need to change uh, individuals, we need to change teams, we need to change organization. And that's the real transformation. For me, uh, what I believe is change what you can control. So you can change what you what you are. So first build self-awareness of where you are and change yourself before trying to you know, help someone change. Uh, and that's what I'm going to talk about, you know, how I changed, how I evolved and, and, and what I've learned uh, during this uh, entire journey. So I, I'll take around 30 to 40 minutes uh, talking about, uh, about all this stuff. And uh, yeah, feel free to add uh, your questions uh, in the chat window and uh, we'll pick it up uh, at the end. All right, so before I start um, on the agenda, that's my LinkedIn ID. I'll, I'll share it in the chat window. I'm, uh, feel free to connect with me. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions even after this session, yeah, reach out to me on LinkedIn. If I can answer those questions, I'll try my best. Um, and uh, yeah, this slide looks is full of badges. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm a certified team coach from Scrum Alliance and, uh, and I'm an IC Agile instructor. I train people on agile coaching, agile facilitation, enterprise coaching and stuff. 
Um, and I, I, I believe in growth mindset. So I keep looking forward to what I should learn next. And these days I'm focusing on learning about systemic coaching and understand how I can use it uh, uh, in, in enterprise transformation. And uh, that's, that's my next best, best version or next better version of myself. So uh, yeah, um, yes, I'm a badge collector as well. So <laughs> that's me. Um, so let's start with uh, our agenda. So, you know, many people ask, okay, is Scrum Master different from an Agile coach? Can I coach if I'm a Scrum Master? You know, uh, all these questions are very relevant. And uh, so the first thing uh, I would like to present to you is what, 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 uh, what Scrum Guide talks about or tells us about uh, the role of Scrum Master. They don't talk about Agile coaches, they talk about Scrum Master. And, uh, the latest version of Scrum Guide calls its, uh, calls accountabilities of all these different roles. They, they don't call they don't even call them roles. They call them accountability. So the accountability of a Scrum Master is serving to the team, serving product owner, serving organization, coaching teams, helping and in, helping teams, individuals. One thing that has been added in this latest Scrum Guide is uh, bringing in agility and in you know bringing in agility not within the team but across the organization. So how do you really do that? So as a Scrum Master, uh, if, you un if you don't understand coaching, how do you coach your development team? And if you are coaching as a Scrum Master, why not call yourself an Agile coach? So for me, a Scrum Master has to understand uh, basics or understand what coaching means and, and not only evolve just in uh, the way they coach, but also bring in self-awareness and help others as well. So uh, if you look at job market, uh, Agile coach is basically uh, uh, years of experience, more years of experience of uh, experienced Scrum Master and they, you know, and they work as Agile coaches. But there's more to be, being an Agile coach. They bring in uh, different skill sets. They bring in different kinds of understanding to an organization. So let's look at something which is called as, many of you would have seen this, this is called Agile Coaching Competency Framework or X model. Um, and this is from a book called Coaching Agile Teams by Lisa Atkins. This, this was one of my first books uh, when, I, when I started working as a Scrum Master and that was really um, useful for me to understand how I transitioned from being a project manager, a, a really command and control way of working to a really uh, become a leader. Uh, uh, you know, servant leader for a team, for a for an organization. Um, and if you look at this uh, coaching competency framework, it talks about uh, different knowledge areas of, you know, agile lean practitioner, technical mastery, business mastery, transformation mastery. On the left and on the right, uh, professional coaching, facilitating, that's your process. Teaching, mentoring, that's your content. Um, and typically, um, I should not say typically, it's for, for me, uh, my journey started when I started learning about what, what Agile means, what Lean means, and it was very theoretical. Uh, I read it, uh, you know, I uh, read books, I joined webinars, seminars, meetups, and tried to learn about what does really Agile means and what Lean means. And, and, and though I was a project manager, I was trying to learn this. Um, I, I come from a development background, so I had technical mastery, I would say I was not the best, but I had understanding of what uh, what technology means uh, and what development teams are uh, are doing. Uh, and being in an organization for some, some time, I had understanding of business mastery. What I lacked was understanding of what transformation means, how I can help in transformation at the very start of my journey. Um, and obviously I had not started on professional coaching, uh, facilitating and mentoring, though I was teaching, uh, uh, people about project management, but not anything specifically on Agile. Uh, I continued my journey. I started my journey. I got this opportunity uh, to work as a Scrum Master, and it was very, you know, uh, bookish way of uh, starting my journey. Uh, but the thing that helped me was uh, the other experienced Agile coaches working in the organization who, who saw that uh, I'm not able to enable a team, enable, a team uh, enable and empower an individual uh, to take their own decisions. 
uh, the team saw me as a senior uh, development team member. They used to be dependent on me to make decisions on their behalf. A product owner would ask me, oh, you know the business better. Can you write the acceptance criteria? Can you manage the product backlog? What could, can I prioritize? I, I was I was still a bottleneck. I was not enabling anyone. And uh, one of my mentors at that time, you know, high up, you know, shared his observation saying, you, you know, you still work as a scrum master, but you're still doing things what they need to be accountable for. And uh, how are you enabling them if you're still doing their work? And uh, I was introduced to this book, Coaching Agile Teams, and that's where uh, this, that was a turning point for me to learn more about coaching. Um, one thing that you would have realized as a Scrum Master, when, when anyone, any new Scrum Master comes in, the first thing that anyone is asked them is to start facilitating Scrum events, you know? So, and that's where I also started. So I was facilitating. And I used to see, oh, you know, I, I'm still doing a very command and control way of facilitating, all right? I used to do daily scrum, I used to do sprint planning, and I used to ask, okay, can you go next? Can you go next? Can you tell me this? Can you tell me this? It was all very command and control project manager, scrum master transition uh, period. Um, but the more I learned about coaching, the more I learned about how do I let go of things? How do I let go of that control? How do I uh, let go of my self-belief that I need to be accountable for certain things? I started understanding how I bring it in my facilitating. Uh, I understood about powerful questions. I understand, you know, how, how do I, uh, what, what powerful questioning means? How, where do I use it? When do I use it? Uh, um, and that made me learn more about uh, uh, coaching skills, uh, you know, and understand how do I bring, build rapport, how do I build trust? And, 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 uh, and I, I started using it in my facilitation as well. Things I learned during the course, I learned about life coaching. I became a, uh, a diploma. I took a diploma in life coaching. Um, and that, that because it's, it was not just because I could not learn from the books. I realized the more I learned from the book, I, 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 put it in, I put it into practice, but I need someone who has the real experience to share where I can learn more. And uh, that's why I went for, uh, uh, for training and then learned more about coaching. And there are a lot of different coaching techniques uh, like ORSC, organization relationship and systemic coaching, coactive coaching um, and life coaching, NLP. Uh, I, pick, I picked up uh, a mix of life coaching with NLP and that worked for me. Um, I, I wanted to explore that area. And uh, in facilitation, I learned about liberating structures uh, and, and that also helped me learn about teaching. So there I learned about training from back of the room and that all this stuff helped me uh, become a better mentor. But over the period where, you know, I realized if I'm focusing on the left hand side and the right hand side, I can't, I can't continue uh, on everything uh, in all the dimensions, at, you know, with equal uh, eagerness or equal speed. So I let go of some things uh, because I wanted to learn something new. I let go of something which was stopping me to do that. Um, I let go of technical mastery. So, you know, the more I let go of it, I was able to enable individuals and teams to make more decisions on their own. I was able to let go of business mastery, though I understood what business was all about. I was able to enable a product owner or product manager to, you know, take those decisions on their own. Uh, and then I realized, how do I really transform anyone? And, and I, uh, the more I learned about coaching, the more I improved in transformation mastery. So that was my journey. You know, though today I, know, I think I am still in the journey to learn more about coaching and uh, more explore more about uh, transformation. And the more I learn about it, the more I understand there's more, more to coaching and uh, more to what Scrum master role is more to what agile coaches role is. Uh, one key question that uh, someone asked, uh, you know, is how is professional coaching different from agile coaching? Then, uh, so what uh, what my understanding is, you know, professional coaching helps you build that skill set of uh, of a coach. Uh, um, you know, how do you how do you act, listen actively? How do you build that empathy? But uh, as a professional coach, you don't bring in an agenda. The agenda is set by a client in a professional coaching. So someone will come and say, oh, I want to learn something. I want to achieve something. 
I will, this is my goal. So all the agenda is set by uh, an individual or a client. So professional coaching, they don't come, uh, a professional coach will not come with an agenda. Whereas an agile coach has an understanding of coaching, but brings in an agenda to help an individual team or organization to be become agile and more agile and live and breathe, breathe it. So uh, professional coach, no agenda, agile coach has an agenda to bring in agility. And that's a key difference. Uh, so an agile coach using all these different techniques or different skills of facilitating, teaching and mentoring, uh, try, uh, they will try to bring in agility. And, and, and at the end, uh, during the, you know, the last part of last section of this session, I'm going to talk about how do you really move into or do, how do you realize uh, I need to teach now? How do I need, uh, when do I facilitate? Um, I'll, I'll share one of the uh, uh, tricks that I try and uh, that can be a takeaway for you. All right. So that's something which uh, uh, which are the these are the different skills that an agile coach should have. So based on this, uh, this is something called as agile coaching growth wheel, and that's the link. I'll I'll I'll, I'll uh, share it with you in uh, over the chat. Um, so this talks about uh, when we when we created it in uh, I think in, it was in 2018 in, in one of the coaching retreats, Scrum Alliance coaching retreat. Uh, this was done basically uh, if you look at this the inner circle of agile lean practitioner it, it is the same x model uh, and it is a self assessment where you rate yourself from a beginner to a journey person from 1 to 5 and all the uh, guidance on using this uh, is available on that link the idea basically was when we uh, as an individual you stand at the center and then move forward and say, oh, you know, if I am facilitating learning, that is your teaching, uh, where am I? Uh, what, what, how, how much I rate myself? So you rate as of now and then see where uh, where do you want to be? Maybe say three months or six months down the lane and rate yourself, uh, rate yourself in future and then plan out. How do I really uh, achieve this uh, growth? OK. Um, um, Many a times you might want to work uh, and um, get a mentor and talk to them saying, oh, you know, I want to improve as a facilitator. And uh, right now I am still a practitioner or a beginner and I want to be more of, uh, you know, at a three or a four. Uh, how do I do that? So you need to work out, oh, I might want to learn this. I might want to practice this. OK, so there's a lot to this. Uh, if you go on this uh, uh, link, uh, there are, we had tried to create a lot of different you know different things different indicators uh, that will help you rate yourself and uh, uh, self-assess so again as i've said at the start you know change starts with you what you can change is you know what what you control you can change so uh, the self-assessments help you become more aware about where you are and then you can make a calculated or informed decision of where do you want to go or what you want to become or be in future okay so try it out and uh, see how it works out for you um, if you have questions maybe uh, uh, send it over to me on LinkedIn and I'll see how I can help all right so that's your uh, skill set that's your self-assessment now let's move on to uh, what do we really do as a scrum master what do we have to do as a coach right and I've been telling you all about change yourself first and then try to see how you can help others change okay so um, you know this is a very good famous quote from peter singh um, he's he's, a, uh, he's, a, he's the author of uh, the fifth discipline if you ever get a chance to read that book it's a very interesting book talking about system thinking mental models and how do you build a learning organization basically and uh, it will give you a good insight of how do you help someone uh, you know evolve and it is not about uh, changing someone. It is about being a partner in their journey to learn something, partner them in that change cycle. And that's the place where people resist because that's the unknown, right? People are always scared of unknown thing. And, uh, and that's why they resist, resist change. And uh, as a coach, as a scrum master, you need to partner that. So what do we do? Well, how do we identify, you know, when do we be a coach? When do we become a teacher, mentor, facilitator? So I call it different stances when, you know, based on uh, what I observe. 
So one of the key skills of a scrum master or an agile coach is to start with an observation. Okay, so you start observation. Uh, based on your observation, you make assumptions. So when you make assumptions, you might say, oh, the team is uh, not doing this. If the team lacks uh, something or you see some, some kind of toxins, you see some kind of, uh, you know, things not working for the team or for an individual. So you make an observation, you make an assumption, but obviously that assumption is based on your own belief. So you go and validate that assumption. Might be by sharing it with the team saying, oh, you know, I've, I'm observing something. What do you guys think? Uh, maybe uh, work with another scrum master, or another coach and share, oh, you know, I, I, I am observing this. Uh, my assumption is this. What do you think? And validate it and then come up with some actions or steps to improve. All right. So start with observation. That's one of the key things. What I'm what I'm talking about here is is something called as will and a skill metrics. You know how 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 willingful an individual is towards a change or towards trying something new, and how skillful an individual, a team, and 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 this metrics can work at an organization level as well. Trying to understand how willing um, the organization or the leaders are and how skillful. Uh, the organization is towards uh, achieving something new, achieving something different, all right? So what do you do? What do you observe? So if you observe there is, let's 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 take an example of a team who, who has been working on a legacy application for years and years. They are, they are happy, they are highly skilled, they know in and out about the product, but they're not willing to now try something new. Their will is low, uh, they're not motivated. They are happy uh, with their with their in their zone, right? And something which is which we call as comfort zone. They are scared of coming out of that comfort zone and go into their uh, challenge or challenging zone. Uh, so if you if you read a book called a Scrum Mastery from Jeff Watts, he talks about three zones: comfort zone, challenge zone, and then panic zone. Okay. So there are times when people, if you motivate people and try to push someone to come out of their comfort zone they might quickly go from a challenge challenging zone to a panic zone and that's that's scary right everyone is scared of going to in that panic zone so um observe what's going on uh with an individual team organization are they low on will to move forward or try something new that's where you need to motivate them that's where you need to you know uh, put on your mentor hat and say oh you know guys Look at this. You know, I've, I have I have worked in a similar situation. I have some stories to tell you. There are some good things waiting for you. Do you want to try this and offer? Uh, and and you know, one thing that I always say: don't when you want to come out of your command and control way, try offering your help and see if they if others uh, are willing to take your help, willing to take your advice. If they're not willing. You know, how do you motivate someone? How do you try to see someone will pick that advice up? And if they pick that advice up, they become more accountable towards towards that goal. Uh, and you come out of that command and control way. Okay, so low on skill, but, uh, sorry, high on skill and low on will. Be a mentor, wear, wear your mentor hat and try to motivate, try sharing some uh, success stories and try sharing something which is, you know, uh, relevant in the market and uh, uh, how how fun it would be to try something new and different. What if they are low in will, low in skill? You know, um, someone's working on a very legacy application and they have not learned something new, no new skill. Uh, they are happy. Uh, they know they can just sustain it because this application will continue. But what if the organization is going to kill that product and come out? Will you let go of that person? So if any, if there is an employee, uh, why not uh, invest time and um, you know invest uh, effort and put effort and get this person and a team out out of that zone uh, and even an organization who might get uh, overtaken by competitors if they don't have a will or skill to overcome or move forward. You know companies like uh, Nokia, who were once a, a market leader in in mobile uh, mobile industry. They were overtaken. They were, you know, they kept coming out of with their model, uh, and they were overtaken by Samsung, Apple coming up with smartphones. Yeah, so they they did not uh, go out in high, you know, coming out of that uh, comfort zone and trying out or challenging their competitors. 
this is a zone where you want to be a teacher and this is a bit directive where you want to teach someone something new okay and then show them that there is something that can be exciting that they can try out and help them learn okay one thing you should notice that when you start wearing these hats people individuals uh, teams organization they will move in this quadrant they will not stay in one quadrant so if you teach someone they might learn something new and they they will move into say high skill but still low will then you'll have to help them as a mentor so you need to keep observing where where are these guys what what are what are you seeing what are you observing what are what are the indicators that show you that you need to change your stance you need to change your uh, way of working with them okay the third quadrant talks about high high on will but low on skill so maybe someone new to the organization someone new to the skill set uh, but you know uh, they have the willingness to learn something different they are willing to take up new challenges they want to go ahead and move forward but they lack in skill this is where you know you you might not be uh, the right person to teach them that so you might have to facilitate you might have to guide them oh you know what you want to learn something new there is some there are there, there are other teams who are doing this i can facilitate a learning session for you oh do you want to learn something different uh if there are something uh, online uh you go and you can go and practice i can go and facilitate their learning i can guide them this is where you help them uh see some possibilities which is outside their vision okay and and and, and then you be, uh, you act as a facilitator the last or the best quadrant to be in is high on will high on skill okay that's where you need to empower them make them feel safe yes go ahead try this something different it's an experiment nobody uh, nobody has done it before so try it out see how it works you know uh, you can fail you can succeed but what we do is we learn from it even from our failure uh, and that's how you empower people you you build in that safe uh, safety net uh, for them to take that plunge all right and it might happen they might fail they might go on low or low on will and that's where you might have to teach them uh, you might have to facilitate some learning for them so what the key here is to observe observe what is happening what are you seeing and then make a uh, assumption and then try to validate it with someone and then try to act and 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 make take a stance all right so that's something uh which i try and uh, i i see and that has helped me in my journey to see which stance should i take all right it's called villain skill metrics um something very useful in your journey and again starting with self-awareness starting with you to uh take a pause rather than saying oh i will help you don't worry you do this and do that um when you stop doing that you take a step back you let the other people shine that's where you become a better scrum master you become a better coach okay and uh, and then you make a conscious decision of what stances you would like to take okay so let's move on to think about and uh, that's something which we say uh, you know if you entail this that that's how you become uh, or show characteristics of servant leader all right so um let's talk about um how, what do we do as a coach you know what are we doing what should we do as a coach uh, be a scrum master be it as an agile coach be it as a manager you know what i uh, i believe uh, you working as a coach you giving some enabling someone does not need you to have a title of a scrum master or an agile coach you can do it even if your title says a project manager or a program manager it's our own call of how we, we want to lead someone um, be it in a coaching way be it in a servant leader way it's our call it's not just because we have a designation of a scrum master or an agile coach it's our call um, okay uh, so uh, two key things uh, or two dimensions of uh, of coaching uh, or a leader uh, or a coaching leadership is challenge and support all right this is a this is something from a uh, psychologist uh, from uh, called uh, Navit Sanford. Uh, he he came up with the, with this challenge support metrics um, uh, in around uh, 1960s, and then it's very useful to understand what do we do. Okay, so let's think about support. So when we talk about support, uh, 
what do we do we build trust we are empathetic we understand your pain we understand we respect you uh, we respect individuals teams and build that rapport okay uh, what about challenge so we challenge their beliefs we ask them those powerful questions we ask them what else can they do what new can you try what are the different possibilities that you can see uh, and 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 this uh, what uh, the psychologist the psychologist uh, mr sanford said was you know you need to have a mix of challenge and support uh, uh, to have that perfect growth okay if you either uh, you know if you try to grow do more of support or more of challenge you won't get the right amount of performance or growth from an individual so let's see what happens if we go either ways and uh, provide them you know more support or more challenge um, so let's start with uh, low support low challenge uh, and self-explanatory what happens is uh, and again this quadrant is for you to observe for an individual for a team in an organization what's going on you know so think about what's going on if, if i see people with low inertia people with apathy they are dull they don't bother why why are we doing it you know i don't care i'm not motivated to act uh, yeah i'm happy what we are doing i don't want to change i don't want to learn if they are in that zone if you see that they are neither being supported they are neither being challenged you know so that's that's where you need to say oh i might want to go ahead and say move on and move forward and say let's challenge them further let's support them further okay but again it starts with with our self-observation what if we are challenging them rather than uh, and, and not providing any support you know keep asking them oh why did you not even try this new approach what what made you again continue this uh, this work you know why did why don't you try something new why don't you go out and learn something new and come back that's a stressful zone that's everything is on you as a leader i have I've given every responsibility to you and i'm that's a very scary place for her to be you know that's where people feel defensive uh, may have may become hostile may leave your organization you will see more conflicts people not speaking up and telling you you're wrong we should not even go try this so if we are as a coach as a manager trying to challenge rather than uh, and, not, and not even providing some kind of support that's a stressful zone so identify see observe what's going on with people and teams and organization are they stressed out are we you know are we are we uh, challenging them um, beyond limit and not providing them any support Let's look at the third quadrant where we, we are very empathetic. We are actively listening. We are providing them lots and lots of support. That's where, you know, lots of managers build a uh, good rapport and, uh, you know, have that connection. Uh, it's called cozy club where people are happy. People are very happy and believe that, oh, whatever they are doing uh, is good, good enough. Uh, they come up with new ideas, but it's within their own boundary of success. They know this will work. They are not coming up with something innovative, uh, and and, and uh, you know they are not moving out of their comfort zone and trying something different. They are always using some tried and tested things. That's your cozy club. That means you are supporting them, uh, and you have a you have a very good relationship, but uh, not good enough to challenge. Right? The right amount of challenge. The right amount of support leads you to the fourth quadrant where you will see people uh, you know that's called a loving boot high performance quadrant where people are trying out something new they feel safe to speak up they feel safe to say oh this experiment might not work but let's try this out let's see if we succeed let's see what we learn from it okay and bring and, and bring in new ideas and help you learn and help you achieve something which your competitors are not doing you know and there is a healthy competition of moving forward within within your organization and that that that's what you want that's the that's the happy spot that's the best zone that an individual a team and uh, and an organization can be with the right amount of challenge and the right amount of support and uh, yeah and this quadrant is for you to observe what's going on you know where should i focus should i move on and try to support 
and as, as, a, as a coach as a scrum master you might have to support it's not just you know um, challenging you know going on keep keep on learning keep on learning keep on doing new experiments it's not always going to work out like that so find the right balance and uh, and, it, and it starts with you to understand and observe what's going on and then challenge yourself where do you want to sort of move forward okay so that's that was my last slide on um, on, on this topic uh, that's me that's my uh, LinkedIn ID that's my Twitter ID if you feel uh, you want to connect with me feel uh, free to do that I'll post it on, on, on the in the chat window as well and uh, yeah that's from me any so uh, I'll talk if you want to come back I'll I share the links that I have. Thank you, Rohit. Um, so we got uh, a few questions. Um, let me just bring this up. Uh, Rohit, if you can just put your last slide up with your contact details, that'd be great, please. Okay, I'll do that. Is it up now? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, so, yep. right, let me just get these questions up here. Um, How can I go to the chat window? I can't. I go, oh, yeah, it is. Sorry, I can see it now. So, uh, any tips on mentoring codes of practice? Sorry, say that again. Um, There's a question here. Any tips on mentoring codes of practice? Can you elaborate? Mentoring coach practice as any? Uh, I. Um, not sure peter i don't know whether you can in a chat window or a question if you can elaborate on that um let me just look at uh just while that's happening uh you've also asked a question about uh, does bcs um, um offer coaches I, i'm to be frank i am not sure uh, but i'm sure we can sort of try and get some answer to that you know um uh if if uh, for the first question if you can put in what they want uh, i might be able to help but uh, i need to understand what's the question now. yes yes that's the thing i'm also oh, yeah. not 100 percent sure what that was you know um let me see the other one uh is asked about sort of books where you can buy some books of these i i guess most places uh rohit uh, yeah, uh, uh, I'll suggest join a meetup group. Um, there are a lot of uh, these days. There are a lot of online meetups uh, happening. Uh, find out what works for you, what time zone works for you. Join those uh, sessions um, and see what people are talking about. And uh, then go and invest on books. Uh, and uh, yeah, start with one of the books uh, from Lisa Atkins, Coaching Agile Teams. That can be a starter. Uh, there's another question. Can you provide, this is by, by Ren, can you provide some guidance on coaching a new development team who would like to be agile? Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, coaching uh, starts with uh, what do you want to achieve with this team? What does the team want to achieve, first of all? So, uh, when I start working with a new team, um obviously i start with introducing what who am i what am i going to do with, work with how am i going to work with them so we build an agreement first of all so we call it designing team alliances so you know uh, many a times people think oh we are still a manager i'm not we are not i'm not a manager i'm going to work with you i'm going to help you achieve what you want to achieve all right uh and as i said you know if you look at the will and skill metrics they might need to learn something different so uh, I try to understand, okay, what's your problem? What do you want to learn? What do you want to change? And then help them. If they need to learn something, I can share with them. Uh, if they say, oh, I, um, Scrum doesn't work for me. Okay, what's stopping you? What your, what's your blocker? So uh, it starts with, first of all, setting a coaching alliance and then trying to understand what are their goals. Um, I, I also do one-to-one -one individual coaching uh, when people say, oh, I want to learn something new. I have my own own individual goals, but that's again ba based on your rapport with the uh, team and individuals. Uh, uh, I also sometimes people come come with their performance goal. They want to, you know, they want to go uh, learn something or, or get promoted. So I help them learn what, how they can work on it. 
uh, how to be agile first let's define agile for them okay if they say oh i want to we want to achieve something like this okay how do we really measure success and then help them keep moving forward so one thing that we always forget is if we come up with some actions we forget to come up with a success criteria help the team identify what they would like to improve on and I didn't let help them identify what are what are their success criteria and if they keep doing some experiment they will identify something new to do okay and uh, yeah keep doing those sessions with them help them identify what areas of their areas of improvement and uh, yeah share your observation uh, one one way to uh, help uh, float I uh, help them uh, to see what they can't see is to float out ideas float out your observation so if you're observing something which is which they can't observe share it with them and and, and let them uh, comment on it so what i do is i say oh you know uh, after any event uh, be it daily scrum be it planning be it any meeting uh, if i observe something i say oh you know can you stay back for a few minutes i want to share something with you and 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 this is again based on my uh, by my my coaching ag agreement with them i have made sure you know i will share some observation and if I leave it up to them, so when I offer or share my observation, I let them say, "Oh, what what do you think? What what do you think about my observation?" And I, I let them talk about it. The best thing is they talking about it and coming up and I, and saying, "Oh, we we did not observe this. Oh, I think this is happening." So it can be conflict, underlying conflict, um, and, and all those stuff, and something you know, some something very easy. People are not willing to do pair programming. Okay. And someone asked for pair programming in daily scrum call and i'm like okay i observe this guy is asking this team member is asking for pair programming and nobody's volunteering what do you think is happening here and let them discuss it okay thank Does you i'm okay. um, sure <laughs> yes it might be i think uh, the only thing is we can't uh, because of the chat facility we can't get um uh how how but it was okay but i'm sure it was you know it was nice uh, no she says thank you <laughs> um Rohit, would you mind sharing this presentation so that we can publish it on our website uh sure i'll do that i'll uh, i think I'll, I'll i'll pass it on to you over the email maybe tomorrow yeah morning. yeah 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 please thank you so uh Issa said there are some questions about uh asking for the matrix and things like that uh uh, Hannah, thank you for your comment. Uh, she does say uh, BCS uh, has a member benefit called career mentoring, which is a tool to find mentors and mentees. So uh, one of the questions, uh, I'm sure that answers um, one of the questions before. Um, she, uh, there's a question here that uh, lots of thank yous here, Rohit, um, uh, and also the author of the book you referred to about scrum mastery please they would like to know that uh, jeff watts if you search for scrum mastery uh that's the only book you will find by jeff watts he has written three books um i'll suggest if you are a scrum master start with scrum mastery uh oh he's written four books now sorry so he's, he's written scrum mastery product mastery uh coaches case book and the latest one the team masteries Okay, so the and, and all four of them are are real gems. So start with Scrum Mastery, and then uh, uh, if you get a chance, uh, do read all the, all the other three as well. Thank you. Um, just going through uh, lots of thank yous here. I'm just trying to follow anything I missed. Uh, it was interesting um you you mentioned uh, that quote uh, by peter m Sange. people don't resist change they resist being changed isn't it um yeah. uh, and that is quite an interesting thing because we all say people don't like change but actually it is they don't like to be changed <laughs> yeah it's um, very early. quite quite an interesting one so how would you sort of when you were talking about your skill matrix, how do you identify when you are coaching many people? Because you are having to sort of assess as such, isn't it? In which quadrant they might be so that you can quietly move them. How do you do that? 
So um, surveys, observation, surveys as in, um, so I use a tool called comparativeagility.com. Uh, uh, it's a paid one, uh, but that's uh, something which I like to share it with the team. Okay, that we get, get this survey going on. It's, bas it's basically talks, uh, uh, questions are uh, more from, okay, what the team perceives, how agile they are, where they lack, and when they, uh, when they provide it back, the tool provides a very good uh, representation of uh, you know where they are in terms of industry standards, and that really helps me to work with scrum masters and product owners and other other agile coaches to see how do what where do we focus what what should we work on, um, and obviously uh, if you are working on it in a transformation first, if you have a chance to work with your leaders, start with the purpose purpose of transformation. Why do you really want to transform? What's the benefit? If you have, if you have uh, a real vision, uh, you can then get the team to align to that vision. Okay. Uh, when I was started working as a Scrum Master, obviously those visions were passed on to me, uh, and many a times I was working without a vision, just getting the team to become better, improve, improve, and improve. The thing that happens just was just working with with a team to optimize their work and improve them. You reach a silo optimization. You know there would be a time when the team will get frustrated. You are as fast as the slowest link in your system. All right. So even though if you are working with a team, helping them improve, the teams around them they are not improving and they are dependent on each other. They can't go faster than uh, what they are uh, doing right now. That's because the other uh, teams who are not improving they are slowing them down, and that will bring in more frustration. And, and 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 in the starting days of me as a scrum master, I always uh, you know I was in in this situation where I was just doing silo optimization, and that's where I was always stuck you know getting the team to a place where they can't move forward, and uh, you know, I'm seeing people getting more frustrated and saying oh I, I want to try more but I can't I want to try more but I can't, and that's where I realized okay if I have to work with the team I have to work with the management as well. I want to help them come up with a vision so that, that not only one team, but all the team try to achieve that vision. Okay. And that, that, that was really helpful when I, when I uh, understood that uh, concept of silo optimization and uh, having a vision to uh, target for. Uh, so there's a book called uh, by John Cotter, uh, Changing, um, Change, um, I forgot. So he talks about eight steps of uh, change and uh, it starts with uh, with a purpose, with a vision, and then uh, and and it's, and if you get a chance, read that book. Try to understand. There are a lot of articles on that as well. If you want to try uh, investing time learning about it. Thank you, thank you. Uh, there is one more comment question. A great point about people not liking change. Uh, do you have any experience with product owners and customers not being involved enough with an agile development team? Any tips for improving that and making a company outside of IT agile aware? Uh, okay, uh, I'll take the first question of uh, product owners and uh, business owners, uh, clients or end users, not not being available. Uh, it, it is, uh, it happens, I have seen it, yes. Uh, many a times people don't understand the importance of working closely with an end user. Okay. Um, uh, how do you change that is again based on what's the what's the reason behind end user or a product owner not able to work together or not being available with for the team. Uh, I can give you one example where I I continuously saw this happening. Uh, sprint reviews by reviews, people not turning up, and the team you know, uh, and and then complaining afterwards. Think, oh, the release does not meet as per our expectation. You never come to came to a refinement. You never came to a sprint planning. Uh, you know, it brings in more conflict, uh, more frustration for the team because they keep working on something which the end user or the product owner never thought of. Uh, again, as a coach, as a scrum master, as anyone who is observing this, you can uh, try to get this conflict resolved. Try to get people to work together. But how do you do that is based on what is stopping them, first of all. For me, uh, it was uh, you know time zone conflicts, people not understanding the purpose of it, uh, 
so one day I said, okay, let's work together. We would like to come and visit your office. Obviously, you can't do that now, uh, and and show you what we have done. Uh, we we created a new environment and gave them the option to go try it out. Don't come and just see something from us. We will we, we will demo you things, but we would like you to go and use it. Many a times, what happens? We never know who is the real user. Product owner might not be the real user. The business point of contact might not be the real user. So they don't have any vested interest, right? Uh, and and um, it can happen the end user who are really interested, they never get, you, you are never in contact with them. So why not identify the real users and say, oh, you know, we are working for you. Uh, we are trying to help resolve your problems. Would you like to come and talk to us? You know? True, 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 true. Start, start I mean, again, sorry, go on, go on. You know, uh, so things like, uh, you know, you can have open sessions, uh, drop in sessions. We are to, going to demo what what this product does. Who would like to learn? You know, uh, get your product owner, get your scrum master, get your coaches to, you know, spread it, spread the information out to your clients to, you know, and make sure that connect uh, that uh, rapport that you have with your business connect. Uh, they spread it out within their organization and get people to come in and, and, and work with you. And see, you know, and if you build that connect connection, ask them, oh, you know, every fortnightly, every three weeks, we do a demo. Would you like to come along? We can show you what we are doing, and keep them engaged. Yeah, it's that it's that being that partner, I guess, isn't it? What you mentioned before as well. Yeah. Yes, I, I think the part. second part of the question. What was that? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So the second part of that question was uh, is something. That uh, anything to, any tips for improving that and making a company outside of IT agile aware? Okay. Uh, yes. Um, many uh, again uh, starts uh, with a vision. Um, a vision is not only for an IT team. When you talk about digital transformation, uh, uh, if you have worked in this IT uh, IT world for long, you would have always seen maybe in. Previously, in, in when, when I was working, IT was supposed to be a, a cost center who, who, who will not generate revenue. IT was always a stepson, or you know, never seen as a, as, as a part of an organization which who can generate revenue. The revenue yes. generators were sales, marketing, and they were you know applauded with for their work. But the way digital transformation, uh, the idea of digital transformation is to get IT part of this. You know, IT is not a support system. IT is part of your revenue generation. If you're marketing, mm -hmm. if you're selling something, uh, you know, things I, I have observed, uh, you know, long time, long time back, uh, sales used to go and say, you know, uh, talk about pro product features which are never even developed and then come back and say, oh, we have sold this. We have sold this stuff. Now you have to develop it. All right, we, we can't develop it now, it, it, it's not possible. So it was always a conflict, right? Uh, digital transformation is, is, is something which is changing uh, the shape of organization and getting this IT cons not considered as a cost center, but IT as a partner in generating revenue. And that's the vision change that needs to happen. And when that happens, when you try to change, move that agility out of, as you know, if you can become a digital trans, agility would, can, Oh, sorry, let me take a pause. Uh, agility helps you become or evolve that digital transformation. And then, uh, you know, agility outside IT division can be with finance, can be with marketing, can it be with sales. And agility is not just Scrum or Kanban. Agility is something to, you know, uh, is, is something which you or as an individual have. You know, we all are agile, but when we go in an organization, we bring in our own flavor of being agile. We, we try to be more command and control at times rather than being agile and being nimble and flexible to what mm. people are asking for. And again, it starts with you. What kind of agility uh, would you like to bring in? What kind of agile would you like to be? And yeah, I've, uh, I've seen HRs becoming more agile in bringing in, uh, bring, uh, you know, onboarding people, helping people to learn something new. Okay. Uh, 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 what, let me give you an example. Uh, I was working in an organization which said, oh, 20% of the time you need to invest in uh, innovation. Uh, at the ground level, sprint planning, 100% capacity should be for uh, new features. Where is this 20% coming, going, coming from then? So obviously this innovation is never going to happen. 
So if you are an organization who has to innovate, but you know, count uh, some, you know, if you can't give some time for the teams or individuals to work on innovation, you are just trying to, you know, work uh, on your recent plan of achieving deliveries. So how do you change that organization? How do you build an organization which learns? And and uh, um, you know, I, I uh, there's a book from Peter Seng as I, I called Fifth Discipline. Uh, which talks about uh, this this stuff. How do you build a learning organization? Uh, and it's a very interesting read. If you get a chance to do read that. Interesting. Very nice. Thank you. That was that was interesting. Um, we can have one more question here. Um, can you highlight the value of a product owner? <laughs> okay. Ah. So. Um, Let's go by Scrum guides, uh, accountability. Product owners are, are the business owners, are owners of the product. They have a vision to take the product. Uh, they understand the business outside the uh, outside the organization. They understand what how competitors are uh, going to evolve, how, what's the market. So they understand market, they understand competitors, they understand the users, okay? If you have a product that is more customer focused, they, they are you know business minded people who have an understanding some understanding of what problems are uh, sorry some uh, some understanding of it but a lot more knowledge of business so they don't have to provide you solution they need to provide you problems and as an it uh, uh, partner to solve that problem you you provide them with how you can solve that problem so they add value by bringing in that business knowledge they're bringing in their negotiation skills uh, having that vision of how this product can evolve and uh, having a courage, you know, having courage of uh, speaking up, saying no to new demands um, and, and, and saying no to a lot of management requests. That's a very key skill, key skill of a product owner, saying no. Uh, if you get a chance to read a book by, by Jeff Watts called Product Mastery, he talks about how product owners can be yeah, and, and and product owners are also supposed to enable and empower teams and individuals uh, and how they can be coach as well so they have to bring in their ability to enable and empower someone and then they are valuable <laughs> if they are not uh, in your organization or in your experience you might want to question how they can add value okay and, and and ask them okay what value are you bringing in? what would you like to change uh, so that they can add value or, or share your expectation from them and see if they they would like to uh, help you out with their with your expectation. Great, nice, very interesting. Thank you, Rahit, for that interesting talk on on agile coaching. Uh, I say I learned uh, quite a lot. With you. <laughs> so uh, and again, lots of thank yous uh, by by the audience there. So so thank you very much. Uh, and just to the audience itself, thank you for your attendance. Um, Rohit has shared his his LinkedIn um, details there. So and he's said in early on in talk uh, to get in touch with him. So please get in touch because there there have been some questions directly to you, Rohit, and I'm sure it'd be easier to get it through <laughs> through through LinkedIn, you know. Uh, but certainly, thank you very much from me um, uh, uh, and. Uh, it has been an extremely interesting talk um, and once I get the uh, slides from Roy, it will publish it on the website so that you'll have uh, the skill matrix uh, to refer back to. Um, thank you again and I'm going to now end this um, webinar um, yeah. and thank you everyone. Keep safe. Bye. Bye.